All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stefan, also known as Impensia, and I've had some requests on my latest video about some uh, flames in the back of the, the thrusters of some modular spaceships that I made. So I was gonna take you through how I made those in Unity. So this uh, spaceship has got uh, six engines to it. And uh, currently if I press play, as you can see, there's uh, no flame or anything like that. It's just um, the actual engines themselves, the 3D objects. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start with this engine, is that I'm going to add another child object, and then I'm going to call, uh, let's call it flame. I'm going to add a component here, particle system. First of all, I'm going to change the actual, uh, you see it's just uh, pink squares at the moment, so let's create a material first of all. So I'll create uh, here in the project, I will create a material, and let's call it flame. And for this one, I'm just gonna go to the particles and standard unlit, and we'll change the rendering mode to additive. And then we can change here. Default particle will set as the albedo map. Once we have that done, let's go back here and let's go to the renderer and then change this material to the new one that we created called flame. And as you can see, it's now just little simple uh, round particles instead. And we also want to change the renderer to stretch build board to get a, a stretching effect to them. We'll need that for the flame. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is how we need to rotate this into position. As you can see, it's firing these flames in the wrong direction. So let's rotate it on the y-axis by 180 degrees. And now it'll suddenly start spraying them back, but we're having too much of a spread on the particles. So to change the spread, let's uh, have a look here. We'll go to shape and change. It can still be a cone, but let's change the angle to zero degrees. And we also need to change the size down to zero or as small as possible. It'll all change it automatically into a very small number anyway. And now we're starting to get a big stream of particles instead. The next thing we need to do is to change the lifetime of the particles. Let's go down to 0 0.7, so uh, under a second in duration. And let's move this uh, flame object back a little bit as well. Change the, let's see, oh, I've got a rotation on this one. So let's go into local mode on the axis. I have a rotation on the spaceship, so that's why the local axis are a bit off. But if we go into local mode here, I can change and pull this one back to here. And then we want to change the size of the particle over time. Um, first, actually, let's change it into an orange color like that. And now we need to go down here, as you can see, to size over lifetime. And then let's just get a graph going here. Let's pull this one up so we can see it and invert that one graph. And now we're starting to get a little bit more of a shape to it, but it's still not looking quite the way we want it to. So let's highlight the flame again. And if it's not playing for you, you can make sure that this one here, particle effect is playing so you can see it in the editor. Okay, we'll also change the speed. They're going a bit too fast. So let's move the speed back to two. And if we want the flame to be a bit longer, we could change, uh, either we could uh, increase the lifetime a little bit. Um, you can play around with these options actually. Uh, you also have the option down here on the renderer to change the length scale. So that's something you could uh, use as well. And for the speed, or we don't need here. If you want a more steady flame, you can increase the number of particles, um, but it's not so uh, smart for the CPU. You might waste a lot of CPU power. So try to get this low, a number as low as possible, but try to keep uh, so it looks the way you want it. Let's keep that at 10 at the moment. And then we want to do is to get rid of uh, some of this tip that's forming here. So we can go in also to color over lifetime. Let's enable that one. And then we'll just change the alpha value or go down to black here. As you can see, it's taking the tip off because it's fading from white to black. And that's pretty much it. And you've got, if you want it bigger, you could uh, increase the size as well of the particles here. Maybe start size two. Move it back like that. And if you don't want it to build up like this when you press play, as you can see, it, it builds up the flame like that. 
then you can enable this one as well called pre-warm then it'll start straight away as you can see now when i press play it's already up and running and now let's uh, duplicate this flame and put it on all the engines here and once you've moved it here all you need to do since it's a child of the new engine you can just reset this value to zero zero on the x and y for some reason no oh yeah that one needs to be moved to the same z value as this one so it's in relation to the engine there and let's do the same for here Control d to duplicate the flame zero out x and y change the z value to the same duplicate again put zero to the local y x and y values use the same z value as the other engines have duplicate again child of number five zero 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 same z value and finally one more control d put it on engine number six and there we have it let's press play and see what the end result look like here we go some uh, nice solid flames uh, and it's quite simple to use the default particle and just uh, a quick setup like this and you can play with the parameters to uh, get the stretching or the size the way you want it but the important things are to use the stretch billboard renders so you get this nice stretched effect and then play around with the uh, with the graphs for uh, how, how they fade out and uh, how they change in size over time and if you wanted to change the colors of this flame it's uh, simply a matter of changing this color here if you want it to more of a blue flame um, or a pink or something like that. Uh, another thing I see that you can do is uh, see that they're not going so white in the middle here. Maybe you want a more white core. Then we can go back into this flame particle and change the color mode, I think, to additive. Oh yeah, once you've changed that to additive, you go down here to the HDR as well. If you want it to be a bit lower in value, you can ramp this one down. Uh, the albedo map to a slightly darker color like this but then you still get the additive uh, nice color in of white in the center even though it's a yellow particle so there we go a really really quick video on just uh, creating some simple rocket flames in uh, unity so using the standard particle systems and uh, you might want to check out we've got an asset as well for space th mm, no, space engines let's bring it up let's see so sound effects here for game developers game ready spacecraft if you oh I've left this as one dollar so you can pick this uh, sound pack up apparently for one dollar at the moment I don't know how long I'll keep it like that it's meant to be thirty dollars but if you have a look at this one you can go to so infancia.com and then go to the game ready sound effects into spacecraft you can preview these and check out the videos here The demo video that I put together uses the same exact type of flame effects that I did this time and different shape, different size, different types of fading and the amount of uh, particles. So, all right guys, so that was pretty much it. The video is finished, not more to it than that. So I hope you make some nice thrusters yourself now and don't forget to pick up that sound pack if you want some sounds for your engines as well. Pick it up while it's cheap. And uh, other than that, have a good one and uh, Put some comments down below if you have any questions and <laughs> please hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.